This is the podcast that rocked for July 21st, 2023. My name is Luke, host of the YouTube channel Rocked. Here on the podcast, we cover all the news in the world of rock, alternative metal, and everything in between. And this is the third week now since I brought this podcast back that I've had to talk about band allegations. I'm getting quite fed up with it. And every week now, I'm probably going to have to hope for the love of God. Please, let's not find out about how awful everyone is. This week, it's about anti-flag. Even though last week, all the stories we heard about nothing more were awful, I'm giving a warning now, anti-flags are worse. It was a couple days ago that we found out anti-flag, in an unceremonious way, deleted all their socials, started deleting things off different channels, and they posted a simple post on their Patreon accounts. That Patreon statement read, Anti-Flag has disbanded. The Patreon has been switched into a mode where it will no longer charge the monthly fee. It will begin to process refunds to all patrons in the coming weeks. Once all refunds are processed, the Patreon page will also be removed. That's it. That's the statement. That's all they had. It's also worth pointing out that there's been no other statement besides that. The band has disbanded. Literally, that's it. No more Anti-Flag as of this week. Pretty awful, right? And normally when something like that happens, if it's not an accident. No one just hit the oops button and deleted everything. Well, that was all on Wednesday night of this week. Thursday morning hits and a lot of people on Reddit and some other internet researchers did a little bit of connecting the dots and they found out probably what is the accurate reason why. It's worth pointing out again, and this is where it gets dark. I'm going to try to give all the facts that I can in a proper statement that give my assumption or best guess of everything. It was also this week that on a podcast called Enough that addresses sexual assault and terrible things of abuse to women and women standing up for themselves, again called Enough, where a woman named Christina Sarhadi, I apologize if I'm, if I'm pronoun- mispronouncing that, wow, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that, went on the podcast and talked about how her situation that she had. Christina found salvation in the punk community as an escape from her home life. But when she finally met her idol, the singer of a political punk band that helped shape her values, instead of treating her like the part of the community, he sexually assaulted her. She opens up completely. She does not name the person by name or the band, but there's also leading tweets and stuff from this woman leading to something that the singer of Anti-Flag, Just Insane, did and how she was a victim of him and how this has been a pretty well-kept secret for a while. Again, the podcast is enough. I have the YouTube link for it on rock.net in case you want to hear it yourself. There's a quote, people don't hang their lives on a music scene what we do, and that's really big for the punk scene. And Anti-Flag is not a band I would have associated something like this with. But as of now, and this is where it gets into my assumptions, for a band to completely eradicate all their social media presence and say they're no longer going to have a Patreon, they're going to refund people, And it's like a very blank statement saying the group has disbanded since being around since the 90s and having a new album coming out at the beginning of this year and who are about to go on a tour this later this year. That does not scream innocent. It's worth pointing out that the people on Reddit that did the dot connecting with everything that Justin Sane did and to this woman, it's looking like there's more and more ties to that and truth behind it. We still have not heard any more statements from the band. I don't know how we'd hear them because they've deleted their socials. We've heard nothing from publicists or press releases. I weep for whoever their publicist is. Good sweet mercy, that must be a nightmare. This is the worst case scenario for anti-flag fans, and there are many of them around the world. I mean, during the Bush administration of the 2000s, they had so much going on for them. And throughout the years, ever since the 90s, anti-flag has been an established name in true punk music. I interviewed Justin Sane back in 2017. We had a good discussion, and now I get to add him to the list of people like Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan, Justin Sane, who I wish I wouldn't have shook hands with. It's pretty bad. I don't know how else to address this. I I mean, Anti-Flag's not going to tour anymore. They're not a band anymore. This has had a consistent line with the group for decades, and I also don't know if we're going to hear anything else about this, because whatever damage is out there, it's done. And like I said, the band scrubbing their presence from the internet as much as possible, deleting social medias, that does not scream innocence. We don't know if the other band members knew about the situation, and if they did not, boy is that even worse that, oh, by the way, this person's getting called out, band's done, and they just woke up the next morning and go, what, what happened? And I don't know if that's true or not. We don't know 
what the rest of the band really their viewpoint is yet and that sucks too all we know is anti-flag is done the allegations are all out there in the open you can read the statement and you can uh from patreon which is very simple there's not much other than what i just read and you can hear the podcast enough it's episode 40 it's on youtube just enough period is the name of the thing and you can hear it on rock.net as well you're welcome to your own assumptions all we know are anti-flag are done Into some happier, brighter news now. Bands that are not done from the 90s. They're returning in the best way possible on a cruise led by Creed. Creed is returning first time since 2012 and they will be performing on the Summer of 99 Cruise, headlined by Creed and then Three Doors Down, which will be going out next spring-summer in 2024, featuring a stacked late 90s lineup including bands like Vertical Horizon, Tantric, Nine Days, and a whole lot more. This is for everyone that had a lot of hair gel and the cross pockets and the CD Walkman with the extended long earbud cord. This is for you. You can find more information online if you're interested in the cruise cabins and things like that. This is a serious thing. We knew Creed was going to be coming back. I would not have bet money on a cruise reunion. But you know what? This will sell. Laugh and make as many jokes as you want. I know we all have. This will sell. This is going to do good money. People want to see Creed live again. And remember, if Scott Stapp can keep his head on straight, they'll be fine. The full lineup will be on rock.net as well. I made a short about it. There's a lot of fun stuff to be saying. But yeah, not only is Creed getting back together, it's going to be on a boat in the middle of the ocean. So you can hear the song Higher being played with the ocean raves crashing around you as you see late 90s post-grunge fans getting drunk out of their mind on the open seas. Many bands made announcements of new albums coming out, and I'm just going to go over some of the more noteworthy ones that we cover on Rocks. The first one just happened today. Beartooth announced the new album, The Surface, with the new song, Might Love Myself. That new song will be played on our new Music Night stream. The new album, The Surface, will be out October 13th on Red Bull Records. Several singles have already come out that were played over the past year. They're going to be included on the new album. That includes Riptide and Sunshine, which is the unique one. Also worthy of noticing, they have a single including The Better Me featuring Hardy. The rock country corporate crossover. He, I really feel Hardy, is the corporate plant. And he's just in the industry and people are going to be using it for name-worthy stuff. I have not heard the song yet. It's not released yet. Who knows? Maybe it'll be good. I just hope the Beartooth album isn't good in general. I just saw Beartooth a couple months ago on that co-headline tour with Tribium. They were a lot of fun. New album, October, Red Bull Records. We'll probably get another single or two in the meantime. Might Love Myself just dropped today. Hopefully it works out. Second album announcement from this week of worthy of noting out is Poppy releasing the new full album Zig October 27th. The new single Knock Off also dropped with that as she's about to go on tour with Paris in August and September in the Midwest and out West. Poppy's new song Knock Off is much more pop oriented. This is even shades of industrial, just the minor hint of industrial beats with pop and then Poppy singing a lot more. This is much different than her previous single on the album, which was a little bit different and heavier in a lot of places. I'm excited to see what Zig does. I don't know what Poppy is going to have for us in store and all this, but I know it's going to be interesting. Poppy is never boring. And I'm a Poppy fan. And for all the things I've loved and all the things I didn't care for, I've never once thought, eh, it's just another Poppy song. Because Poppy knows how to cover a lot of different lanes. Third album worth calling out is Code Orange and the new album The Above coming out later in October. The new single is what people were talking about called Take Shape, a more new metal sounding track featuring none other than Billy Corgan of the Smashing Pumpkins. That's not a big Mad Libs I just did. Billy Corgan really is joining Code Orange for this song. Billy Corgan also helped with some of the production from what I understand along with some other people including Steve Albini who worked with Nirvana and Pixies. That's actually pretty awesome. This 14 track album will come out on September 29th. I think I said October before but it's September 29th. It will be hopefully a beast if the song takes shape is any indication of what we can expect. Just like Poppy, Code Orange cover a lot from industrial to hardcore to grunge, you name it. New metal is something they also devil in as well and that's what Take Shape's all about. I'm excited for this one. You can find the song on rock.net. You can also find the album information and we will be covering this one and the Poppy song on New Music Night. 
And the fourth album announcement, along with a big tour announcement, is in this moment releasing the new song The Purge with the album God Mode coming out later this year. The new album is long in the In This Moment discography, In This Moment still going strong with it, and that new album will arrive October 27th, as well as the song that just came out today, The Purge being on it. I've heard The Purge, I've heard mixed reactions, and I'm going to save my opinion on it for New Music Night. I've been an In This Moment fan since roughly 2013. Outside of the previous full-length album, I've really enjoyed everything In This Moment's done. Now, I hope that In This Moment's latest album, God Mode, coming out later this year, will have more of a spark and creativity and have some really strong, powerful moments. Don't know what to expect yet. Check out New Music Night on Sunday if you want to hear my thoughts on The Purge. That being said, the Kiss of Death tour is coming out with Ice Nine Kills as a co-headliner. Ice Nine Kills and In This Moment featuring Avatar, who I love, and New Year's Day will be touring all throughout the Midwest and East Coast just a few days after Halloween and continuing that Halloween season all the way through December. This is going to be a fun lineup. They're going to be playing good-sized venues too. Definitely check that out, especially if you've never seen Ice Nine Kills or Avatar before. Or This is definitely an inline tour. It's going to keep that Halloween theme going. So again, Ice Nine Kills, In This Moment, Avatar, New Year's Day, on the Kiss of Death tour, along with In This Moment's new album, God Mode, coming later this year. And finally, in some more uplifting news, we covered The Warning every now and then, the Mexican all-lady band who does a great job with straight-up rock and roll, such great stuff. Well, The Warning has been hired by Pepsi to start doing ads in Mexico. I think that's kind of awesome. I hope this leads to other big brand sponsorships and other stuff. I'm glad that the Warning are getting an opportunity like this to get more eyes on them and to get their music heard by more people. When you're a good band and you have something unique and you're strong with it and you actually have a good representation, good things can happen and companies will want you to represent them. I'm not saying they're going to have to sell out and start like chilling out Pepsi cans and bottles at every concert, making sure they include Pepsi in the lyrics, but something like this is a good thing. I hope more of it happens. The ad is online right now in Spanish if you want to check that out. Hopefully more good things happen and hopefully it's for good bands and good people that deserve it. That'll be all for the podcast that rocked this week. Big thanks to my patrons and YouTube members. Special thanks to Brandon Bruce, Chris Noman, and Dom Noble. And a final reminder for the podcast that rocked listeners, I promise that this show is not just about allegations. It just keeps happening more and more often and that's terrible. <laughs>